Welcome once again to the Do Brand You show here. It's an in conversation with Rashmi today, and she's coming to us from Malaysia. I'm very excited to have Rashmi here. Now, again, with our Do Brand You show once a month, I am having a conversation with someone who is doing the best version of themselves, both per- personally and professionally. And we keep this about 30 minutes, so stay with us because we've got some great things to talk about. So, Arashmi, thank you for coming here. Thank you so much, Lauren, and I'm so excited to see you face to face after a long time. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> Well, let me just tell everybody who's listening in who uh, Rashmi is. She's a certified emotional intelligence coach, a soft skills master trainer, an award-winning youth empowerment coach, motivational speaker, and she was a former secondary school science teacher, which I didn't know. I was a former mathematics secondary school teacher. So she is the founder and CEO of Empowering Growth Training Academy and an integral part of a leadership lens as a youth empowerment coach and trainer. Now, she uh, works with a range of clients, including people searching for personal development and growth managers and executives trying to build their leadership abilities and groups looking for better collaboration and communication. And more than 2,500 young minds and corporate individuals were empowered by her work with them. And she's passionate about her uh, to create positive learning environments. And she strongly believes in the power of human connections and the ability to unlock hidden potential and to become a better version of themselves. So now everyone can see why I have um, wanted to get you in here to our show to have a conversation. So Rashmi, let me just, um, let's just start off, start off. Can you just give a little bit of, of, of a story about what's happened in the last few years? Because we met back in 2019. I know you weren't working. You were, you were, you, you were telling me about your children. So what's happened since then? Hey, thank you, Lauren. Last time I remember we met in uh, April 2019. That was the time I, I was very active in Toastmasters and that was the same platform we both belonged to. I'm so honored. And mm-hmm. uh, that time I wasn't fully working because that was the time I fully dedicated to to instill the values of learning inside me. Keep learning, mm-hmm. keep upgrading your skills. And my kids were very small too. My boy was quite small. He was four, four years old that time. So I was pretty much clear in my mind, uh, they need my time, they need my attention that time. But as I respect my individuality, as an individual person in this in this world, I was very clear, Rashmi, uh, you should not forget to work on yourself. Because I'm very clear about my mission to create the best version of myself. So mom's duty are on a side also, and uh, the duty of that profound duty towards yourself to create your best version. Uh, I was very focused on that part also. And I would like to thank you for that, Lauren, because that was the time you were the first person introduce myself to that virtual world. How the online meetings work on, how Zoom work on. I still remember your keynote that time. And I give credit to you honestly, openly, because you were the first person introduce that virtual learning platform to me. And once I dive into virtual learning, I think it's unstoppable. Yeah. I kept going on, I connected, I learn, I uh, gain so many expertise in emotional intelligence of master uh, skill training programs. And the things are going on, I'm picking up so well since that time, Lauren. So mm. this is a journey. Now, that time, I was not a businesswoman, not entrepreneur, just a learner. But if I'm talking today in front of you, uh, I can proudly say that uh, I'm a m- mom of two beautiful, very empowered, very good public speaker kids. They are good mm-hmm. in speaking. Good. I'm a businesswoman. Uh, I co-founded a company in uh, Malaysia with my partner Srinivas, and I founded a company in India as well. So, oh, yeah, that's so amazing. The path to create the best version of yourself. The work in, is still in progress. <laughs> That's fantastic. I, I really love how you, uh, 
even though you became a mother and, and that can be an all consuming task, that one thing is you looked at the value that you could offer your children at a young age, but also to continue being that lifelong learner and, and doing that. That's, that's so cool. Um, yeah. And I love the fact that you got into online learning and, and, yes. and yes, I mean, it's so incredible the world we live in because you know, so many people that are wanting to do that best version of themselves, they're wanting to communicate, not just with people in one room, but today, yeah, we can communicate globally and can connect that way. Cool. So when you say you started a company, you're a partner in another company. Um, so what is your why and, and how do you live that through the, the businesses that you're, do, you're working through? Lauren, uh, very, it's a very important question and I love to answer this. Why? What is my why? When I was a teenage girl, I was very well protective by my family members, by parents. So much protective that somehow I lost my confidence and voice. Mm. They were everywhere. I, I had someone to take care of everything. Mm. But looking at me because I felt uh, I have no power to take the decisions, what I want to be in life, how I want to be in life and uh, who is the leader of my life. So somehow mm -hmm. I struggled through through that period during the, uh, the teenage time. Uh, when I get married, uh, I met, uh, this is an arranged marriage. So he was a strange person to me, but uh, through the effective communication and understanding, uh, this is, I can say that uh, he is the soulmate. He is no one can be the mm -hmm. best husband. Yeah, he, he is that person. He empowered my vision and he supported my individuality. He instilled wow. that value to teach me, Rashmi, your existence is beautiful in this beautiful world. You know, when the things fall on individuality, and that was the time I realized how important it is to work on yourself, having your own voice and take the lead of your life. Right. I have wasted long years of my life just listening to others and be the follower. And when I was in the situation having two individuals, my children in front of me and looked at them, Rashmi, how you want to raise them? Uh, the same kind of uh, childhood you want to give them, uh, you pass through? I said, no, I was very clear in my mind, no. I want to nurture two beautiful young minds who have power, capability and confidence to speak up, to take the lead of their life. So things mm. start from my children. That is how I came into the youth training programs, youth speaking programs, mm. youth empowerment programs. So for me, like my kids are doing well on that front. They are confident, they are smart, they speak a lot, they are very vocal, they know how to speak, where to speak. Now this is the time I should dive into the outer society, connect well with the, with the world and the youth. So that is how I became the youth empowerment coach, youth trainer. And wow. the reason was very clear. Rash uh, Rashmi, uh, whatever you missed in your teenage, whatever you have suffered from, not let the others. So be the voice of those youth, empower them, teach them, coach them, train them, and help them to be, uh, be the best version of themselves. So mm -hmm. you can say, Lauren, this is the vision and mission of my life to empower more and more youth, give them the voice. Everything is inside us. You just need to realize how much uh, the potential you have. So mm. this is my why, very clear. <laughs> wow, it's so clear and it's so authentic and it's so humanly connected to a pain point in your life, which is so clear that our purpose often comes from that emotional connection that we have with the pain point. And I want to say too, like that pain point of, I mean, how many people, you know, look at, you know, young people and, and think, oh, they have everything. They have everything that they need. You know, they don't need anything. And yet here you're saying, I did have everything, but I didn't have my voice. I didn't have me. And so that's so cool. And I love how 
And it's so true. Your purpose flows from inside of you, from that core, and then through your children, because those are the closest people to you. And then to a wider world. That is amazing. I just love that. So uh, we talk, I would like to ask you this question, which is a good one is what is your biggest failure that you've had? And, and what did you learn from that? Okay. Uh, I can say that was the biggest failure as well, or the biggest blessing as well, Lawrence. I will yes. connect with cool. these two things. Um, I wanted to be a doctor because uh, my parents and it was a dream of my parents. Uh, so they wanted to see me as a doctor. I was the eldest and the only girl in the family. I tried hard for it. Three years back to back entrance exam and India is a highly populated country. You know, it's a cutthroat competition for, for any exam, for any entrance exam. I tried back to back three years, but uh, I couldn't make it to be the get admission in MBBS. I was always getting stuck to the BDS or BAMS. Uh, I was not ready to be the dentist. <laughs> I want to be the neuro <laughs> neurosurgeon. So I like, that was my vision, but I couldn't achieve it. Failure after failure, failure after failure. And that was the first time I encountered the, I, I, I live what is the depression is. Before that, it was just a bookish world in, in, my, in my life. But that was the time I really found myself into severe depression mode, uh, third year of my preparation of medical entrance exam. And uh, that was the biggest failure. I couldn't make it. Then I chose the another path. I did my master's in biotechnology. Things were pretty much well. I was enjoying the hostel life the full freedom and you know the, when you are far away from the family you have what time you will wake up what time you will sleep you are the master of your own life so things were <laughs> <laughs> things were awesome for two years then uh, I, I i speak honestly and very fearlessly about about this part of my life being uh, connected with the indian family that was the time if you uh, know you educated now this is time to settle in the married part. Uh, when I was just about to fly after doing my master's in biotechnology, my my father was there with a proposal of a of a scientist boy. He was a scientist in a pharmaceutical company, and being a father, he thought, Rashmi, it's a good match because you are into biotechnology. He is a scientist in pharma, so you can work together, gel together very well, and make your career. But Things are not so easy, Lauren, in life as we mm -hmm. think or our parents think, right? Um, mm -hmm. I met him. He was an orphanage uh, orphan boy. Lost mm -hmm. his parents as an early childhood. And uh, family was a word he lacked throughout his life. Wow. Being an emotional person who was overly protective with all the relatives and the overly pampered yeah. with the love, me... But seeing my, my, my better half, who never uh, have that family atmosphere around him, I begged of myself, this is not the time to focus on the career. This is the time to focus on this individual, my husband, my better half, and give us beautiful beginning of this new relationship. Oh, wow. So uh, I gave up on that part. Uh, career, no. That was, again, I would say a failure for me in my career perspective because I'm a very driven person. I'm a career conscious and I'm highly qualified. So just sitting inside home doing nothing is not not uh, my kind of world. Uh, mm. But that time, consciously, I decided to give time and attention to this relationship. I worked yeah. well and then uh, he advised me to get enrolled in few uh, other courses so my study can go and we can work on our relationship as well. I did my postgraduate diploma in intellectual property right. I did my graduation again in education and uh, we started a beautiful family. When I was settled down as a teacher in India, things were picking up. Again, I failed because my husband shifted to Malaysia. And Malaysia mm. is a strict rule. You cannot work if you are on dependent visa. Ah. There in Malaysia, I encountered, encountered the second depression. Being alone in a foreign country, 
no friend no relatives again inside the home but i didn't give up resilience is a very beautiful word of my life and i say rashmi the first alphabet of my my name represent resilience yes. i bounced it <laughs> i yeah. worked all the failures were preparing me what i am today yeah god was testing my zeal and zest rashmi how long you will follow your dreams are you committed to achieve your dreams or i or you just settle down on living in an average life i was not i was not agree to live an average life i kept working on after one failure another failure another failure and if you will ask me lauren today rashmi what uh, pa- which part of your life you want to change if you have that uh, boon mm. uh, that, that blessing i i will say no because every failure made me the way i am today <laughs> yeah so, every failure made me the person what i am today last year also lauren that was one of the major thing happened with me uh, i hit my spinal cord that uh, mm. slip disc issue i was on bed rest for 3 months when things oh were God. going awesome in my training and coaching business i was doing so nice and again fall down mm. but that's life is we cannot yeah. back off from the adversities and challenges yeah failure no it just another take a break work on yourself and bounce back stronger yeah that's such that's such good advice it's so inspiring because i think that is the 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 difficulty with people that are going out trying to be an entrepreneur starting a business doing a side hustle whatever they're doing they 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 found that purpose their passion their why and they want to go forward and then it's just these roadblocks and they keep coming and like you say it's this is life it's just life and then it seems like you get down again uh you know what is there anything that happened like was there anything that you did or is there any kind of advice that you could give to people that might be listening right now that you know really are just in that you know they try they feel like hey I tried I've given it 2 or 3 years I've done everything I thought and it's just not working and I just think I should just just throw it in. I mean, what would you say to someone like that? Okay, there are two advices I would like to add here, Lauren. First one is uh life will never be easy. The the if today is a peaceful day, tomorrow you will have another kind of challenge. So have that clarity in your mind. Life is full of challenges and adversity. It's not a bed of roses. okay yeah. so whatever you are starting with start with your why why you want to start this business why you want to start this uh, whatever your your job and profile is if that is very clear in your mind write it down on on your board okay because tomorrow when you're falling apart tomorrow if you're facing the financial crisis your health issues it will keep you and bring your attention back on on your focus what was your mission mm-hmm. and reason for this business for this work so i always have that clarity in my mind why i started i am a human yeah. being uh, daily i i am an emotional intelligence coach as well the day of uh, before yesterday my boy my 8 year old, old boy was crying you know lauren and why he was crying because i was on a business trip for 3 days so he was missing me badly and this is i appreciate vulnerability highly because i understand it's very important because it create that authenticity between the people he asked me lauren mama can you be the normal mama like others who come to school and fetch and uh, just live the normal life not spending time on the screen and the books i was shocked you know when mm-hmm. things are going good i was so happy i was so <laughs> peaceful and content from my business perspective I was so proud I'm doing really good Rashmi so proud of you and my boy is saying and requesting mama you can be the normal mama am i lacking somewhere am i losing something am i not justifying my role as a mom yeah i appreciate open clear communication so much i yeah. sat with him for 2 hours and he is such a young gentleman young boy he openly express whatever in his going in his mind 
I try to understand why mama is doing this, what will be the benefits and how mama is trying to balance everything. But in the end, if I'm trying to balance one thing, another thing will go a bit down, Ayush. So we really need to work as a team in this family. Sometimes yeah. mama cook in advance, come to fetch you, but there will be the time mama will be outside and she will not be able to. Why I'm bringing this point? Honest conversation with your loved one and with yourself is very important when you yeah. are fumbling down. Yeah, that's so true. It's so yeah, true. I, yeah. I just love that, Rashmi, how you have opened up and listened to your son. And uh, just recently I had a conversation and actually we I read a book. Uh, it, was, it was Green Lights, actually, from Matthew McConaughey. And in there he has this this quote or a, a sort of a small poem, I suppose he calls it. And it says, if, if the only thing I wanted to do today would be to talk to you, would you listen? And yes. that just hit me. And I just, I mean, isn't that the essence of emotional intelligence that it's, it's not about you giving up what you're doing or, or whatever. It's about listening first, letting somebody be heard. In this case, it's your son, letting him be heard. I mean, it can be a manager with a coworker. It can be a husband with a wife. It can be any, any, any connection. But once you open up that and let's allow them to be heard and then bring them into how they can be part of the whole solution and, and that, which actually leads me to ask you this question. Uh, you know, in our world today, community is quite, some would say it's quite fractured because we have people from all over the world kind of living in different countries. You've moved yourself. Um, and we have a lot of people forming online communities. And how does that actually work? Say some people. And so what does community mean to you and, and how important is it and how is it kind of, uh, how does it come, you know, come out in your life? Community is an integral part of a human life. When yeah. I say I want to empower the people more around me, I'm not referring my first family, my children, because that is the inner world. Their existence yeah. is safe in this inner world. But when tomorrow they are jumping out, they are making friends, they are doing job, they need to empower themselves in a way so they understand the cultural differences, diversity and the individuality. Yeah. And that yeah. all core values will come from when you see yourself among the community, a, a very active member of the community. So community, you cannot segregate yourself out of it. It's a group of like-minded people and the unlike-minded people as well who challenge your core values. You know, yeah. if, if you say, I like to be among the people who are only like-minded and just like me, then the growth possibilities are very low. Yeah. You cannot grow because there are no challenges. How can you appreciate the light if you're not encountering with the darkness? Yeah, so that is the same true. thing I teach my kids as well. When you are in international school, you have students from different, different lives. Sometimes they, they, they have a bully uh, just because of their uh, dark color, brown color uh, complexion. So he feels so hurt. Mama, why? I said, bitter, you are the part of this integral community. If 10 people are very good with you and in one is like that, you should not lose your heart. First thing, I always appreciate I'm bringing it again, the communication. Communicate to him. It's, a, it's just a race. I'm from India and that's why I'm brown. It's no harm to be on the color. It's a humanity which makes us united through this world. So mm. make sure when you are creating your community, don't get afraid from having unlike-minded people. Yeah, that's because true. challenges, adversities makes you and shapes you the better person, not yeah. only the love and pampering and the soothing, soothing kind of emotion and feelings. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. No, that's so good. I just love that. And I think that's going to really lead us into uh, our last topic here. And, and, and as we begin to close up, we still have a good five or six minutes here. But can you really dive deep now into this emotional intelligence and what is really, you know, uh, something that's 
important to you about it and what you're teaching about it and how relevant it is to us today. Right. Thank you so much, Lauren. And now I have made this a goal and target of my life to spread more and more awareness about emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is nothing, I'm telling you in a very simple sentence, is the ability to understand and manage your own emotions and emotions of others as well. In others comes your children, your spouse, your family, friend, and the society. And now imagine mm -hmm. for a moment when if you are feeling emotional turbulence or threat from some specific situation, and first you are aware and mindfulness, oh, these are the emotions are prevailing my mind. I'm feeling scared. Now what to do? Why I'm feeling scared? What is the safe zone? What is that safe person I can approach and he can listen me and bring out me? That is self-awareness, the first pillar of emotional intelligence. So by doing that, I am protecting my individuality. I am keeping myself safe from that fear and stress. Now it comes to the social awareness. When Ayush, I, uh, my conversation with my boy Ayush the day before yesterday, uh, his at the moment his mind was looking like his mind is full of complaint. And for a moment, I had that doubt. Am I doing good? Am I doing justice as a mom? Then yep. throughout the conversation for two hours, I was reading his emotional state. I And I came in a conclusion. He was missing his mom for three days. And this was the best thing because he doesn't understand other way of communication. And this was the best thing he can. Like, mama, you can be the normal mama. So, Rashmi, mm. don't take it as a negative comment. The boy was missing you. Be there mindfully. Keep your phone aside. Everything switch off for next two hours. Be mindfully present with your little boy. When his emotional cup will be filled it up, he will smile again. He will appreciate mm. your presence in his life. So, that is social awareness and mindfulness. Mm. So, emotional intelligence is this. Just understand your emotions. Manage it effectively. And just understand the emotions of others as well and try to manage that effectively. Yeah. This is emotional I, intelligence. I just love it. I just love it. And so what kind of work are you doing? Are you working with people just um, like that are running businesses or leaders? And what kind of topics are you covering with them in regards or what challenges are they finding? Because we have such a kind of a crazy world now where we have you know, so much happening in our world. We have all of this, you know, AI coming in. We have all of this teams of people that are coming from so many different diversities. We have all of the, you know, so many things. So, you know, what what is the emotional intelligence in that realm? In today's world where uh, the world is full of social distractions, social comparisons, and the people are working 24 by 7. Uh, this is the crucial time when everyone is talking about artificial intelligence and I'm keeping the flag high of emotional intelligence because this is the time everyone need to sit down for a while, be yeah. mindful and appreciate their existence. You know, Lauren, mm -hmm. now we, we find our happiness and peace in this outer world. But emotional intelligence says things start from self-awareness. It is yeah. start from inside. Mm -hmm. You can find the peace, you can find the solace, and you can, if you are able to enjoy that solitude, believe me, no one can create any fear, stress, anxiety, panic attack, depression inside you. I have been through those phases. Why? Yeah. Because I was so indulged in, in giving myself filling others emotional cup rather than me. I was too much mm. into giving. I, mm. Somehow I was forgetting my own existence. What truly I need. I need my me time. I need yeah. my meditation time. I need my time to connect back to me. Me. Yeah. I'm a mom of two kids. I'm a wife of Anuj. I'm the daughter of my, my parents. I'm the sister of my brothers. But in the end, this, who am I? What yeah. is my purpose? Why mm. I am in this world? You know, mm. That connection is very important. And I feel so uh, 
uh disheartening when i see people when they are giving just giving 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 to the outer world and they are not doing justice to themselves mm. not able they are working 24 y 7 in it worlds they are educators they are just trying to uh give 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 what they don't have if i mm. ask them most of the time i ask my participants uh what about your me time and they are like me time we don't have time we we are so busy in working 24 by 7 we work from home we work do this and i feel so uh, pity 20 yeah. in 24 yeah. hours if you cannot give your soul 10 minutes time right uh, yeah. that is the biggest injustice you are doing to yourself it's so true and it's <clears throat> it's when we take ourselves away from that inner core of yes. who we are and that full humanity of who we are that yeah we we actually can't really be the best version of who we are i just uh ran a workshop a, a couple of days ago uh and i started with everybody listening to a heartbeat a human heartbeat for for one minute and it was very transformative wow. because they just don't listen i said that that you know every day you wake up you need to even listen to that and what was so amazing was one of the ladies on the call uh said that she actually has her son's heartbeat on her phone wow and and i just i just thought how cool is that for us to be creative now and to find ways that we can really tap into that inside and and really want that you know yeah. so that's so cool Well this has been an absolutely fantastic conversation. I'm so glad. I mean, you it's so inspiring to hear all of 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 what you've done and really how you live by your why and you're so driven to not only be and do the best version of yourselves but to create impact. And what I say locally globally, you do it locally and those people are then empowered to then carry on as dominoes will um will affect each other so that's so cool so i have one last uh question for you and that is what is your favorite quote and why is it okay favorite quote and i would like to share one more thing the favorite book as well oh yes please do <laughs> so uh, i always advise in my emotional intelligence coaching sessions with my participants to go through with the two books first i would like to share my quote uh, lauren my favorite all time favorite quote is if you can dream it you can do it mm, i so love that have, if you have dream to start that business that any any of your project believe me if you have dream about it you can do it no matter how challenging and uh, mm. your your journey full of adversity is so always mm. believe that Yeah. Second thing I am talking about the books this is I want to share with you the option B it has changed my life this is written okay. by the Sheryl Sandberg the CEO of Facebook and okay. she has compiled all the beautiful stories of of the people from different part of the world who face the adversity who face the challenges but they shine like bright sun they bounce back so stronger So this is something we really need to uh, read on. Uh, it 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 teaches how to face adversity and building the resilience. Second, mm -hmm. I'm a very big fan of Robin Sharma. Very diehard fan of him. Okay. Yeah. The book is the leader with who had no title. We oh. we always talk about leadership, leadership, leadership. But leadership starts from from self, self leadership. Yeah. if yeah. i am able to lead myself before leading as an emotional intelligence coach if i am leading myself as an individual as right. a mother as a wife in a right direction believe me things will fall on the place hmm. self leadership is crucial apart from having a specific fancy titles designations no that comes later on if you can lead on align with your core values you will be the best leader in this world So these two books best ones right. and always remember if you can dream it you can do it. I love that. I love that Rashmi. Well thank you so much. I'm going to I'm actually going to get those books as well. I'm always looking for new books to read. Uh thank you again Rashmi. This has been absolutely amazing. We'll we'll probably have to get you back on because there's so much more I want to talk to you yes. about. <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you so much, Lauren. It's an honor to see the person who bring me into the uh, virtual world. Yes, and this I, is so cool. <laughs> I upgrade, and you know, Lauren. I was the first person from my district one or two who joined the Zoom meetings and who sneaked out the outer virtual world. You know, because of you. <laughs> oh, that's so cool! I just love it. Okay. Thank you.